Hello, my name is Nazir Khan from the Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology and I would like to welcome all viewers, Canadian and viewers around the world. Now, in this presentation, I will be demonstrating or explaining the parts of a stress-strain curve for, for a steel sample. Now, the first thing that we have to, uh, to look at is that we have a typical steel sample stress strain curve here okay and uh, we have certain points that are of significance which are listed on the left hand side here we have the proportional limit the elastic limit the yield point very important ultimate stress and the rupture stress now we are going to go and define these particular points I'm gonna start with the proportional limit the, the, the terminology itself proportional it means for every uh, unit of load that was uh, placed on the sample, there was the same unit of strain. Okay, so if I double the load, I would have double the strain. That's why we have a linear relationship for this part of the curve up to about here. Okay, so this, the reason why this is a straight line, it is because the load and the strain is proportional to each other. Okay, and you have a straight line part of it. Now, if you want to de define the proportional limit, you would take a straight edge and you place it along the straight line part of it and where the straight edge or where the graph start to deviate from that straight line, that is the proportional limit. Okay, so let's, uh, let's look at that. That's number one right there. The elastic limit just happens just above the proportional limit. It is really the high point right here. Okay, and the elastic limit is uh, basically where the, the the material behaves as an elastic part. Now we have three points right in this area here. It's going to be the proportional limit, the elastic limit, and the yield point. Okay. Now the yield point. Well, let's go back to the elastic limit. The elastic limit is where the material could stretch like a rubber band and when you release the load it goes back to its original shape. Okay. Now the elastic limit or the yield point which is the uh, upper part of the elastic limit if you go beyond that point the material, the steel sample will permanently deform. Okay. And so we have to be very very cautious when designing that we do not we do not exceed the yield point or the yield stress. Okay, um, we'll show you how to uh, determine the yield stress in the next couple slides. But let's go and put the elastic limit in its place. Again, it's just above the uh, proportional limit, the high point right in there. The yield point now just happens right beyond that, and I'm going to show you, like I mentioned, in the next slide or so how to define that uh, yield point so you know that you don't exceed it. Now again the reason why you don't want to exceed it is because if you go beyond that point the material will permanently deform. What that means really is that if you have a bridge and you overload that bridge with large trucks or something like that what happens is that you have taken the material beyond the elastic zone okay and when you go beyond the elastic elastic zone you're gonna have permanent deformation so now if you have a member that's designed uh, for a certain load and it's a certain size when you run that overload on it it becomes longer and narrower and the next time it cannot handle the load again so your design load has decreased and it just keeps on going like that so you never exceed your yield point or your yield stress okay let's go to the ultimate stress now the ultimate stress by its name by defined by its name it's the highest stress that could be gained and that's the high point of this curve right that's it right here number four you just have to go and pick it out and then what happens is that you would have rupture where the material actually breaks and that's the end of the curve Again, we have the proportional part of the stress strain curve. We have the elastic limit. We have the yield point. And then we go up to 
the ultimate stress and then we we have um, rupture happening there or the material breaks now let's uh, let's look at uh, this is just a reminder again never design beyond the uh, the yield stress okay let's go and look at some of the zones that are here um, two major zones actually there are two major zones you have the elastic zone and then you have the plastic zone within the plastic zone itself you have three sub zones which is your yield when you go beyond your yield point and uh, you will have uh, a straight line part for a little bit of it it uh, it's not going to be horizontal it might be uh, a little slope positive slope to it but that that straight line part again there is called the yield zone once it starts to deviate when the curves start to deviate again it's called strain hardening now well, let's go back to the yield zone the load has stayed the same but the material itself is stretching by without uh, any real increase in load and then it hardens up again and then you have to increase the load that's why you have a rise okay and it goes to the ultimate and then the material starts to give way again and it starts to drop okay the load starts to drop but the material is still stretching to the right and then it ruptures so what we have is the yield zone the strain hardening zone when it uh, starts to recover a little bit and you have to add the, the, the load to, to get the, the strain and then you have a decrease of load and it's still strain and then it ruptures okay now these are the three sub zones of the plastic zone okay really we have two major zone elastic zone and plastic zone within the 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 plastic zone you have yield strain hardening and necking and I'm gonna explain about necking in just a minute um, I have a diagram here let's bring it up as you could see the first the very first sample that we have here it is uh, a sample that's untested okay and the second one you notice it has has a little bit of a, a notch in there where it says necking what happens if after you've uh, exceed the ultimate stress then you start to have necking that, like it shows there and then it breaks so that's why this zone is called necking right strain hardening is that the, the you have to put more load to get uh, to get it to to actually strain the same amount okay in this zone here so that's uh, that's what the necking part of, of it is about we're going to go to a real stress strain diagram now and take a look at it when we look at this particular stress strain diagram the um, find the yield point and the modulus of elasticity that's what it's asking for now that happens right in here in this little piece here the ultimate happens here and the rupture happens here but we have um, a proportional limit then we have an elastic zone and then we'll have yield here but we can't work with this if we wanted to go and find yield we need uh, to expand this particular graph and the way that we do that is just by expanding the horizontal we cut cut the graph off right about there and we just look at this part of it for now okay let's go to um, something that we could read the horizontal numbers now let's go to the next graph that is the same graph as we've had uh, previously we have the proportional part we have the elastic limit we have yield somewhere in here but we need to define yield um, on a constant basis if two different uh, people were determining the yield they should come up with the same number or very very similar numbers now we're going to use the uh, 0.2 percent offset method to determine our yield point our yield point is somewhere in here the straight line part of it okay when we look at this 0.2 percent offset that means that we're going to offset this line 0.2 percent and then we're going to create a parallel line to your proportional part and where it intersects the, the stress strain curve that that'll be our yield point okay let's go and uh, we, because we are using the the 0.2 percent offset uh, method we have to go and find that 0.2 percent here now if you hit you take 0.2 uh, percent and divide it you convert it to a decimal percent you're going to divide it by 100 
and it'll become 0 0.002. Most stress strain curve, in Amara speaking, I'll say all stress strain curve should have this point already on a major grid line. Okay, I am going to put my first point right there. And now I have this distance. I'll take a, a straight edge or a ruler and I'm going to measure from here to here. And I'm going to go up somewhere here. I'm going to measure over again the same amount. And then I'll take a straight edge and draw the line in. And that point right there is my yield point. Now I have to go and find my yield stress. All I have to go and do is pick it off of the y-axis. Right? So I'm just going to go over right over here and I'm going to pick it off as 655 approximately 655 we have uh, these graduations in between here are 20 each so you have five graduations so we have 20 40 about 55 okay so that's our yield stress we know that when we're doing design we should not exceed 655 MPA megapascals okay let's go now that we have found the yield stress let's go and find the modulus of elasticity, the E value, and the E value is the actual slope of the proportional part of the stress strain curve. Please do not use the, uh, the line that you created to find yield. Use the original, okay, because you could be off with this. You might not uh, be uh, exactly parallel or whatever, but use the original line. When we look at uh, the slope of a line, it's rise over run. So if we could figure out, if we could pick a point and go up, this would be our run. If we could pick this point, go up and pick a rise right here, then we would have rise over run. Okay. Now, it's important for you to take note of this. You should always pick your strain. Always pick your strain. Go up and hit your, your stress strain curve and then go over and pick your stress. Because you're going to divide that small number into this. So it's very important to get the small number correct because there could be vi big variation if you are going in between grid line and you're estimating this uh, strain value because remember again you're dividing it into another number and as such small variation here will create big variation in your results. So you're going to go up from your uh, strain, hit your stress strain curve and go over and pick, pick off your, your uh, stress. Okay, now you have your stress and your strain. You have your rise, which is 222 MPA, and your run, which is 0 0.001. Dividing by 0 0.001 is just like multiplying by a thousand. So let's go and calculate the E value. We have E is equal to rise over run. We have the 222 MPA divided by 0 0.001. As you notice, um, strain is millimeter per millimeter. That really means that it is millimeter of, uh, of deformation per millimeter of your length of sample. Okay, that's what it means. Millimeter of deformation for millimeter of your length of sample. Now, when these units will actually cancel out and you're left with MPA. So when we divide this, it'll be 222,000 MPA. And now you have uh, completed the entire uh, stress, what is required for this particular problem. Now let's, um, I would like to thank you for, uh, for watching the video. I hope that it helps you with your study. And uh, if you like the video, please leave a, a comment. It does help. Uh, I know at least that I'm not wasting my time making these, uh, these videos. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening.